an Israeli ambassador, Mark Regan, um, to uh, speak to us and share with us now. Friends, and I, I have met many, many friends here this evening. But I should start with a special mention uh, to Lord Balfour here in the front row. <laughs> many of us got together last year with Tim's assistance to celebrate a hundred years, a centenary to the Balfour Declaration. And we respect what you represent, and I know that you're proud of your family's heritage in supporting the Jewish people returning to their homeland and re-establishing sovereignty. I think I speak for everyone here tonight. We thank you for being here, and we thank you for everything that you represent and everything that you do. Thank you for that. getting us all here tonight. And ultimately, we are here to celebrate something that is truly, truly significant. 70 years to the state of Israel. And, and, and for those who had something to bring us all together tonight, and I know there were many, many, I just want to name a few. First of all, to Lord and Lady Reading, thank you so much. from Revelation TV and Christian Friends of Israel, thank you for your very, very, very important work. And last but not least, I have to say thank you to my good friend, Tim Bates. For 2,000 years, we were dispersed, scattered across the four corners of the earth. But for all that time, we never forgot our homeland and we yearned, yearned to return. And 70 years ago this year, my people became sovereign and independent again. indeed, indeed something that we can all celebrate. Just as we can celebrate 70 years of transformation of Israel's development from what was once a barren land deprived of any significant natural resources, today a country with a flourishing economy abundant in high-tech innovation. Israeli medicine has helped the disabled to walk again, the blind to see again. Cancers and chronic diseases have been detected, prevented, and even cured. Israeli innovation powers the computers, laptops, and mobiles that we all use every day. And Israeli technology is preserving water and helping to protect our planet. To achieve all this and more in just 70 short years is not just remarkable, I believe it's a modern day miracle. Amen. Jewish state. 
You are praying also for a nation that has made and continues to make a remarkable contribution to all of mankind. A nation whose innovations have changed lives and whose scientific breakthroughs have saved lives. And when you pray for Israel today, you are also praying for the values that our peoples share. Values rooted in our common Judeo-Christian tradition. Values of democracy, liberty, religious freedom. Seventy years ago, Israel's founders promised to preserve those precious freedoms. In our Declaration of Independence, it says black and white that Israel would promise to uphold, and I quote from the Declaration, freedom of religion, language, education and culture. And we promised, and once again I quote from our Declaration of Independence, to safeguard the holy places of all religions. I am pleased to report to you tonight that the Jewish state has kept that promise of freedom. And I'm also happy to tell you that that freedom has allowed the Christian community in the Holy Land to thrive. Today, the Christian population of Israel is five times larger than it was when Israel declared independence in 1948. The community has grown fivefold. Praise God. Amen. Thank you. And everywhere in Israel, the Christian population is, of course, free to pray. And to pray in Jerusalem today, Israel's eternal and undivided capital. Amen. Now, unfortunately, in many parts of the Middle East, this is not the case. We see many of the oldest Christian communities on the planet face intimidation, persecution, and even destruction. The turmoil that the Middle East finds itself in today means that our peoples need each other more than ever before. Because just as Christian communities across the Middle East are endangered, the Jewish state is threatened by challenges, by security threats that are not shared by any other country. Whether it be the Iranian regime, its terrorist proxies like Hezbollah and Hamas, or the myriad of extremist organizations that plague the region, these groups seek the destruction of my country, and they seek to murder my people. So Israel is in the eye of a terrible, terrible storm. But I want you to know, each and every one of you, that despite all of this, my country continues to extend its hand in peace. Mm. We Israelis wish to see true reconciliation and dialogue with all, all our neighbors. And I know that all of you, Christian friends and allies, support that call for peace and reconciliation in your prayers. So I ask you to continue to pray for Israel and to stand up for Israel and continue to stand up for peace and reconciliation. And in your communities, I ask that you encourage others to join you in doing so. Visit Israel. Those who visit Israel once, visit again. Those who visited twice, visit three times. Those who visited three times, visit four times. I believe, I know that every visit to Israel is an important, significant experience. And when you come back, share that experience with your friends and families. Speak with your friends, with your co-workers, those that trust in you, spread the message. Speak of Israel's history, its culture, its commitment to peace. Speak of how the Christian population of Israel has not just survived, but has thrived. Speak of how a land of a historic people has blossomed since it was reborn as the Jewish national home 70 years ago. 
and speak of its freedoms and its commitment to life, dignity, and respect. Isaiah chapter 62, verse 1. For Zion's sake I will not keep silent, and for Jerusalem's sake I will not remain quiet. Your friendship and support of the Jewish state stands as a testament to those important words, as does this celebration here tonight. As Israel's ambassador, I know, I know that Israel has no better friends than the Christian communities around the world.